Welcome to this video from Fudge Learn on the subject of Enterprise Command Centres in Release 12.2. So Enterprise Command Centres or ECCs, what are they? They're operational reporting tools and interfaces and this means that they provide information that's relevant to the business and helps with business decision making. They're a new feature in Oracle eBusiness Suite and they're available from version 12.2.4 onwards. Here's the good news, Oracle are actually providing them for free with existing licensed applications. So if you're already using payables, receivables or human resources for example, then you can install and configure the enterprise command centres for them at no additional licensing cost. So what are some of the main benefits? Obviously you've got the major benefit that your data is being displayed in one place and that you don't need to move between different responsibilities or different e-business suite forms in order to access your information. The dashboard is providing that information for you as a central point. But in addition to that, the ECCs use the same security configuration as Oracle Business Suite, so you've got no additional security setup required. Unlike static reports, they provide near real-time data, so the ECCs and their associated dashboards can be set to have the data refreshed at regular intervals. Another major benefit is that the ECCs and their dashboards are seamlessly integrated with eBusiness Suite. So from within a dashboard, it's possible to drill down and see eBusiness Suite forms data without having to change responsibility. Finally, although some setup and configuration is needed, this will be minimal if the out of the box version of the ECCs and dashboards meets with your business requirements. Oracle have been developing new ECCs and dashboards in each new upgrade version. So starting from release 12.2.4, they're now available across multiple products, including those that are listed in this table. As of March 2020, there are 28 command centres and 95 dashboards available. So let's take a look at the Enterprise Command Centres and their dashboards in action. I'm going to do this in the context of the Procure to Pay process. This is based on a scenario where there is someone from a project team who is responsible for procuring a monitor that is intended for use by the project. And we're going to assume that they've gone through and used their ECC dashboard for understanding the budgeting position for the project and making sure that there are sufficient funds available. This means that we'll be starting off in our procurement where you'll be able to see how the Enterprise Command Centre technology has enhanced the user interface for our procurement and how processes such as raising a requisition or actioning an approval can be that bit easier. Then we'll look at the Enterprise Command Centre and dashboards for procurement, how they can help with processes such as ordering or receipting. And then finally, we'll move on to the Payables Enterprise Command Centre dashboards and we'll take a look at how they can be used. Right, so I've now logged into Oracle Business Suite as a generic operations user. And the first thing that you might notice is that this eBusiness Suite user interface looks very different from your eBusiness Suite user interface. That's because at version 12.2.4, Oracle introduced a new look and feel within the user interface for eBusiness Suite. As you can see, it's a much more simplified home page and the display I've gone for here shows icons for each of the areas that this user has got access to. From an eBusiness Suite user perspective, this kind of display is probably more familiar to them 
as it's one that's commonly used on e-commerce sites. Also, it's really easy to set up. It's simply a case of going into settings, which is the cog icon towards the top of the screen, then go into general preferences and you're looking for the section headed visual and you need to change the settings for home page style, page header display style and top level menu display style. To get the user interface to look how I've got it, then just set those to Framework Simplified, Icons Only and Icons and Links. Then just apply it and your user interface will look like this. With the icons as you can see. Let's move on with the demo and we're going to access our procurement so that we can find the item that we want to requisition. The item that we're looking to purchase is a computer monitor. So I've clicked on computer monitors and I'm just waiting for it to display all the monitors that are available for purchase within our procurement. To reduce the number of results that have been displayed, I'm going to set a number of filters. The first one of these is on the price of the item. So I'm going to set a maximum price of 350. There are various filters that you can set from the left hand side. You could specify specific suppliers or specific manufacturers. I could also select a different display type, for example, either LCD or LED. But I'm actually going to select a monitor size of 24 inch. Great, so that's now narrowed my list down to five items. So now I just need to review each of those items and decide which one I want. So out of the five, I've selected two of the options and I'm now going to compare the specifications of those. So I've clicked on the three dots and I then click on actions and highlight differences. So this means that I can do a side by side comparison of those two items and you can't actually see it here, but the differences are highlighted in blue. So I want a touch screen. So I'm going to select this item and add it to my cart. I'll close down that window and now I'm going to view my shopping cart and edit my item. So I'm going to review my requisition details. I'm happy with the price, the need by date and the deliver to location. I'm just adding a justification to say that this item is required urgently for a project and also I want to be notified with any status updates for the purchase order that's assigned to the requisition. An approver has been assigned which is the facilities approver group and I've also reviewed the charge account information. So now I can submit my requisition and it's been assigned the number 18348 and my approver will have received a notification asking for that requisition to be approved. So now I've clicked on requisitions, there's our requisition and it's showing a status of in process. If I click on in process, we can then see that this requisition is sat with Connor Horton pending approval. Okay, let's assume that Connor's completed his approval of that requisition. And now if we view it in our procurement, the status will have changed to approved. So let's move on and look at the next step of the process, which will be using the procurement ECC dashboards. 
The first dashboard we're going to look at is the requisitions dashboard. Now we're viewing this dashboard as if we are a buyer in purchasing. So across the top, we've got key information that's relevant to a buyer. So the number of requisitions in the pool, the number of unassigned requisitions, urgent requisitions, and the number of requisitions to process. At the bottom of the dashboard, we've got a list of the requisitions for that buyer. And if we click on the chain icon, we can view that specific requisition, which is the one that has been raised by our project requesting a monitor. So in addition to viewing the requisitions, we can also see the requisition lines from here as well. You can see that our requisition has only got the one line. And you've got all the information there available. If you want to filter just on that requisition, then you click on the requisition number. So now the whole dashboard refreshes and all the data in the dashboard is relevant to only that requisition. So there's the distribution information for our requisition. You can see that the charts towards the top of the screen, they automatically refreshed once we filtered on that requisition number. So along the left, you can see the different filters that we've added and you can filter further if you want to. So let's clear that filter. And we could filter on, for example, the project code that's been used. We can also filter on the charge account information as well. That would be useful, say, for example, if the buyer is wanting to do some analysis on what requisitions have been raised by a specific project or what requisitions have been raised and charged to a specific cost centre, for example. If you have a large list with a, a number of lines displayed there, then you've got the option that you can export that list as a CSV file. OK, so let's remove the filter, which is on the charge account, which means the dashboard refreshes and we'll be back to the original view that we had. Another useful feature is that you can use the chart data for filtering as well. So this is useful for a, a buyer who might want to focus on a specific category, for example. And this chart on the left is showing category information um, per requisition line and need by date range. So if we filter on the category computer monitor for the last three months, then the dashboard refreshes automatically and we can now see we've got a nice pie chart there showing the ship to location for that category. And we've got a list of the requisitions. So we can use that information to kind of drive decision making and perform further analysis, of course. So let's move on and we'll take a look at the next dashboard, which is the orders dashboard. This dashboard can really support a purchasing buyer with analysis and decision making around orders, shipments, any delivery issues, if they want to do analysis around a specific supplier or alternatively they might be having an issue with overdue shipments 
so they want to do some analysis around delays uh, they may might be delays for deliveries going to a specific site for example another useful feature here is the ability to save searches so a buyer can set up different filters and then save those for retrieval later so like for example the one that I've just set up around month end issues simply click on the star at the top of the screen to retrieve saved searches or filters so users can tailor the display of the charts in their dashboards and to do that it's simply a case of clicking on the three dots on whichever chart it is that you want to change the display on and then your options are you can change the display of the bars so either stacked or unstacked and then you can also change the orientation of the chart itself so either vertical or horizontal and that can be done on any of the dashboards and on any of the charts and again those changes to those settings can be saved in the same way that I showed you earlier let's take a look at the lower portion of the dashboard where we get some more detailed information you can see a list of the orders relevant to this buyer you can also see lines information schedules distributions and deliverables information as well we're going to return now to our imaginary project scenario where we're ordering a monitor for our project and we're going to imagine that the auto create process has run and has therefore created a purchase order from our requisition that was raised earlier so here we are order number 9088 this is the order that's been created for our monitor if we click on that order number then we can see the order details so the supplier is advantage corp and if we wanted to we could view the order lines schedules and distribution details as well from here so really the dashboard can be used to view the whole information about the purchase order so let's return back to the order and let's imagine that we've got an overdue shipment and we need to do a bit of analysis around that and that the overdue shipment is for our supplier Advantage Corp and it's for a particular location the Seattle location by clicking on the ship to location for Seattle that then means that the dashboard automatically refreshes so any data within the dashboard is related to that location from a buyer perspective a buyer might use this filtering if say for example they've noticed that there's a pattern with delayed shipments for a particular supplier and it could be that say for example there's some bad weather in the Seattle region that is impacting on deliveries in that area then this becomes apparent by the delayed deliveries and so a buyer can use these filters to understand which requisitions are affected and how the uh, delays are going to impact the need by dates okay so let's now go do some supplier analysis So the supplier analysis dashboard that we're taking a look at now that's going to be helpful to buyers if they're wanting to do some particular investigation work on that supplier 
So say, for example, they want to look at doing some spend analysis and looking at particular items that are ordered through that supplier and looking at volumes. So they might be able to go back and renegotiate bigger discounts with that supplier if there's been an increase in volumes of a particular item that's being ordered, for example. As well as procurement history, this dashboard also shows relevant information about supplier performance. So as you can see, you've got two charts here that are helpful with that. So on the left, you've got overall supplier performance and you can see it's a bubble chart and you've got bubbles for each of the different suppliers. And it's showing information about deliveries, quality and how much spend is with each of those suppliers. OK, let's take a look at another useful feature that is back in the procurement operations dashboard. And we can take a look at requisitions. Now, buyers may want to, as part of a, a daily check, take a look at the number of urgent requisitions that they've got that have come through. And it's very easy to do that using the dashboard, as you can see at the top here we've got two urgent requisitions showing. If we click on that, the dashboard refreshes and we can see the data for those two requisitions. The pie chart clearly shows that for these two urgent requisitions, they're both for the Ship2 location, New York City. And down the bottom of the dashboard, we've got more details about those two requisitions so we can see the requisition number the fact that they're both in a status of approved and we can see that they're both for the same operating unit for example another area that a buyer or member of the purchasing team might want to focus on is some investigation around overdue orders and we can do that by looking at the orders dashboard Here we can see that we've got 330 overdue shipments and by scrolling down we can see some of them listed there. You can actually expand that list as well if you want to. If we click on schedule then we can actually see the delivery promised date and also the need by dates for those orders as well. So we can do some analysis and comparison on those. Another option, say, for example, if you're wanting to produce a list in Excel and do some manipulation and filtering on that, you can export this list of orders from the bottom of the dashboard. I've just expanded it as shown and to export a list, you would need to place a tick against all the orders that you want to export. then click on the three dots and choose the option to export. You can also, from this point, you can action orders, you can place orders on hold, remove holds, cancel orders and do bulk header updates as well. So you've also got the option to actually take action from within the dashboard. So the dashboard isn't solely for viewing. Um, so now let's export these 10 records that I've selected. You'll also notice that we've got the option to export hidden attributes and the primary key. And we can also e compress the file as well if we want to. So we've chosen to just automatically open the file in Excel. And there it is. So now we're going to return to our scenario of the monitor that's been requested and ordered for the project. And we're going to imagine that this monitor has now been delivered. So we need to record that as receipted. And we're going to have a look at the different options that are available for receipting. There are two options that we're going to take a look at. Firstly, using the Oracle eBusiness Suite mobile app and then secondly, receipting 
through iProcurement using the new Enterprise Command Centre user interface. Firstly, let's take a look at the mobile app. The mobile app is free and it works on version 12.1.3 and 12.2 onwards. So let's get logged in and then I can show you what information you can actually get access to from within the app itself. So I'm logging in as an operations user. And as you can see, we've got a list here of this user's requisitions. It shows some key requisition information, requisition number, what the requisition's for, the status of the requisition and value of the requisition. So let me just pick this requisition 18273. So I can see that this requisition is pending approval with Catherine Baker and I can see the need by date and some additional description information. So now if I search for the requisition that we raised for our monitor, which is 18348, here it is. And if I go into view the detail for that requisition, here it is. You can see the justification that I put on there as well. And that it's been approved by Connor Horton today. If I return back to the requisition information, and then we can see the details of the purchase order. And then if we click on that, we can then see the specific order information. So the need by date, delivery information and project information. And then if we return back one step, to perform the receipting, it's simply a case of clicking on that tick in the top right corner. But we're not going to do that now because I want to show you receipting done through the new iProcurement ECC user interface. So instead of the home page, we need to go to requisitions. And here's our requisition at the top. And now we can go to receiving. Now we've got the option, we can use the express receive option this time because there's only one line on that requisition and we're happy for that to be receipted. Express receive means that all the lines for that requisition will get receipted. So if you've got multiple lines, but you've actually only received the item for one of them, then you wouldn't use the express receive option. So it's a quick process to complete. It's just a case of clicking on receive, entering our receipt quantity, Oops, and I forgot to tick on the requisition line that I'm receiving. And then it's just a case of submitting. And we should get our receipt confirmation. There we go. Our receipt's created. So Express Receive is definitely a quick and straightforward option. Now we can move on to the final part of the procure to pay process, which is payables. And we'll take a look at the ECC dashboards. 
So I've logged back into Oracle eBusiness Suite as the user operations and this user has access to the Payables Command Centre. So let's go straight into there and we can start having a look at what information is available to us in the dashboards. Now I need to filter on the specific ledger that the information will be held in because we've actually got access to 10 ledgers. So I'm selecting Vision Operations and that will help to reduce the amount of data that the dashboard is displaying and make it a bit easier for us to find what we need. I'm going to use this table to filter on the Supplier Advantage Corp. So I just click on the bar in the table. The dashboard will automatically refresh and show data relating only to that supplier. The chart on the left is showing information about invoices that are overdue and we could use that to filter if we wanted to but I'm actually going to search on the purchase order number 9088 and I want to have a look at any invoices that are relevant to that purchase order number. So we can see that we've got one invoice that's been matched to that purchase order and it's for our supplier advantage and the due date of that invoice is the 19th of November. So it's, it's not overdue, but what I do notice is that we've got the opportunity to take a discount on that invoice for early payment. So let's make sure that we take advantage of that. So rather than having to switch responsibility and log into accounts payable, we can actually manage the invoice and the discount through the discounts dashboard. So I've clicked on the dashboard and this is it here. So you can see that um, we're still filtering on the Supplier Advantage Corp and we're filtering on our purchase order 9088. I'd like to talk to you about this bar chart, uh, this one on the right. It's showing first accounted discount and discount percentage by supplier, so by our Supplier Advantage Corp. At the moment it's it's a bit unclear as to actually what it's telling us. We've got a brown bar, which is actually representing the discount amount, which is four US dollars. And then within there, we've got a blue dot. That's actually showing us the discount percentage, which is just over 1.8%. Now, what we can do is to make things a bit clearer, we can change the format of that chart and I'm going to change it so that it's actually going to split the two different values. So now we can see a bit clearer we've got the discounted amount at the top and we've got the discount percentage at the bottom. I think you'll agree with me that that format actually looks clearer. Now what we can do is we can click on the invoice number and that will take us straight through into the invoice workbench and we can from here continue with processing our invoice and generating the payment for that. So here we are in the invoice workbench. We've got all the information that we would normally expect. If I click on lines, you can then see all the purchase order information, who the requester was. And then if I keep scrolling over to the right, you'll see the project information as well. Right, let's go into the distributions and just have a quick check of the lines. 
Yep, so we've got our item line and the relevant tax lines. And the invoice is showing as it hasn't been validated and it hasn't yet been accounted either. OK, so let's move on and get this invoice validated and a payment generated. So it's the usual process. I put a tick in validate and OK. So it's showing us validated. So now let's pay in full. And we're going to pay by cheque, which is nice and straightforward. Yep, we're definitely going to take available discounts. So now I just need to change the default setting. So it's defaulted to electronic payment. So I just need to change that to check payment and change the payment process profile. So I just select check. OK that. OK, so they're all sorted. Just save my changes. OK, so now we're going to imagine that the payment run has been completed, payments been generated and now we're going to return back to the Payables Enterprise Command Centre. And if we go into the period close dashboard and look at the unaccounted events, then we'll see our payment as it's not yet accounted, but it has been generated. So yet yeah, there it is on the top line there. Transaction 1582 for 213.2 US dollars. And obviously that amount is after the discounts being taken. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this tour around the Enterprise Command Centre and dashboards for the procure to pay process. If you want any more information or if you want to check out any more of our videos on Oracle products impacted by release 12.2 and the new functionality and changes that are available, then check out the Fudge Learn website and we also have a YouTube channel as well. You can use this QR code to go straight to the website. And don't forget, on our YouTube channel, click on subscribe and then on the bell in YouTube and you'll receive updates when we make further videos available. You can also add comments and we'd love to hear your thoughts.